Hello runners, and welcome back to the second episode of my console tutorial series. This episode is going to be focusing on ways to keep speed, which will include b-hops, punching, and sliding. Just like the first episode, there will be a bonus section at the end. Let's hop right into it. B-hopping in this game works a little different compared to other games such as Portal or Left 4 Dead. In those games, you can stray from left to right to gain speed as you bunny hop, and the reason you can bunny hop is because you're jumping off the ground before friction takes place. With this in mind, forget all of it. In this game, b-hopping works because after you jump off the wall, there is a small amount of time where the game thinks you're wall running even though you've made contact with the ground, which is why b-hops are only possible off of walls. During this time, if you press jump, you will retain all speed you previously had. Another difference is in other games, if you turn too fast while b-hopping, you lose a lot of speed. But in this game, you can do a full 180 degree turn and still retain all speed. But it's important to never use quick turn, because that resets the state of your character, and the game no longer thinks you're on a wall, so b-hopping won't work. If you're attempting this and you're not jumping even though you're pressing jump, that means you're pressing jump too early. But if you're just normally jumping, then you're pressing jump too late. When you get a b-hop, you'll know it. The screen will tilt and Faith's arm will go in and out of view. Some things worth mentioning is make sure you're not spamming jump. If you enter too many inputs quickly after another, the game will spit out random button press timings. Also, strafing is possible, however the speed you gain is little to none, and I mainly use it to correct minor imperfections in my b-hop path. This is the main way that you will retain speed on console dashes, and the best way to get better is to practice. Personally, I recommend exploring the city, and doing a wall boost, and then attempting to follow it up with a b-hop. However, if you're looking for a specific spot to practice these things, I recommend this spot right behind a scenic route because it's very flat and if you get a perfect wall boost it'll only take two b-hops to get to the other side. If you can't make it to the other side in two b-hops then that means your wall boosts are subpar and could use some work. If you're an intermediate speedrunner and you already know how to b-hop, I recommend trying to b-hop all the way around the glass rectangle on the floor. It's a great way to build up muscle memory. Remember how I said that b-hops are only possible off of walls? Well, I lied. They're also possible off of mag swings. They have a bit of a different timing and are capped at a max speed, and also you can do them backwards, sideways, and forwards unlike normal b-hops. The next method of keeping speed is called punching. You simply spam light punch and hold forward on the joystick while you have speed. Now, you may be asking, why don't we just use this method all the time? It's a lot easier than bunny hopping. Well, the answer is, it's slower than bunny hopping. After the first punch, you slowly start to leak speed, so make sure not to punch too long after a boost. Also, make sure not to strafe while punching, as you will lose speed a lot faster. Now, if you're in a dash right now and you're trying to punch and thinking, why is it not working? That's because it doesn't, at least not for console dashes. However, for all dashes no teleport, or full game speedruns, it does work, and if you can't get a b-hop somewhere, you might as well get a punch. Punching is better for in situations where it's a lot harder to get a b-hop on uneven surfaces, but at the end of the day, b-hops are better. They are faster, and they do keep more speed, so go build up that muscle memory, and I'm going to give you one more way to keep speed. The final way to keep speed in this game is simply by sliding. It's not as good as punching, because as you get up from a slide, you lose a lot of your speed. A way to counteract this is by rolling as you get up, but you still lose a decent bit of speed, and it's a lot harder to judge how long you should slide for to not eventually be slower than walking. Some problems that you could run into when trying to keep speed when sliding is strafing. When you strafe while sliding, you lose speed a lot faster, similar to when you strafe while punching. Another thing is when going off an edge while sliding, a lot of the time you'll grab the edge of the ledge you are trying to fall off of. A way to solve this problem is by rolling off the edge the same way that you would when trying to preserve speed. Personally, I don't recommend using sliding as a way to keep speed except for specific situations where you have to or after an extremely difficult boost. Instead, I would go for the b-hop, but if it gets you the pb, do what you gotta do. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a handful of different sliding methods. Sometimes, sliding is your only option, like in a case where you have a lot of speed but you stumble after you've gained all the speed. 
In this situation, you can slide after the stumble animation is over to continue having a little bit of that speed. We are now onto the bonus section of this video, and the first trick I'll be going over is called a Tirga Hop. Basically, when you superhero land by holding the left trigger, you can spam jump while the animation is happening, and you will jump at full speed either forward or backwards. To go forward, you'll want to hold the left trigger right after you jump, and to go backwards, you'll want to hold it right as you're about to land. It's very not useful. The second trick I'll be explaining doesn't really have a name, however it's a way to get up a lower hang like this faster, as opposed to just climbing up it, which is really slow. You just look left or right, and at the apex of the jump, you strafe and look into the vent or ledge you're trying to get on top of. It can be kind of tricky to get the hang of, but it's a lot faster and definitely worth a try. The next trick I'll be going over is using kicks and punches to get out of bounds. When you move sideways and light punch, or move straight forward and heavy kick when in front of a vent, or a, a place that is similar in height with a vent where your feet can fit through but your torso can't, your head will kind of pop through, and then you can just jump and crouch at the same time, and you will typically just pop right through. The people who are going to use this are mainly full game runners because it's used in a few situations, but it's good to know regardless. Another thing about kicking is it actually pushes your hitbox forward. So if you're doing a run like this and you're able to kick, right before you get to the circle you should kick because you'll get the run finished a little bit quicker. Another thing that you might run into when b-hopping actually is you might just be minding your own business and you randomly mantle something. This will kill your speed very quickly, obviously, because you can no longer be hop. The way to fix this is simply by not holding forward. If you don't hold forward, you won't mantle an object, and especially if you're trying to get a rail hop, it's best to try to not hold forward, as your success rate will be much, much higher. The last thing I'll be explaining is why you shouldn't shift all the time when walking forward. I see this a lot with newer runners, uh, maybe because it feels faster, but it's not. And also, it makes your accuracy a lot, lot worse, as when turning from left to right while shifting, you uh, it kind of feel like you're on ice skates. But also, there's a small amount of time after shifting forward where you just can't jump, so it can screw you over a lot, and there's a lot of downsides to it. I recommend getting rid of that habit if you have it. Welcome to the ending of the second video of my console tutorial series from Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I plan to have two more episodes that explain the rest of the tricks that are known in the game, and a possible fifth episode with a bunch of misc tricks all compiled together in one place. I do apologize for this episode taking so long, that was not my intention. I did run into some technical difficulties, but they should all be fixed as of now. I still don't know what to name this series. But, if you have any further questions, you can ask them in the comments, or you can go to Foey's channel, because he has a link to the community discord, which you can join, where people would be happy to answer any questions you have. The link to his channel will be in my description, just as it was in the first episode. My goal with this series is to get more console players interested in running the game, because there's like, a very small handful of us, and company is always great. So, if you think the game is fun to run, go try it, go practice, put on some tunes, and do some wall boosts. With that out of the way, I will see you in the next episode.